In this video I will show some basic maintenance tasks you can do for any cassette decks and this is just a general instruction because there is quite many different manufacturers and models when it comes to old vintage audio electronics and this specific device is called Expert Pro Sound FD760 doesn't ring a bell as a manufacturer because this device is rebranded when it when it's sold in Finland in the 70s or 80s and there is no manufacturer mentioned so only thing I know this is made in Japan but the year of make no clue and the real manufacturer, no clue. But there is many uh, general things we can do, no matter what cassette deck we have. Uh, first thing is the belt. So there is always some kind of belt, which is uh, transforming the motor spinning to the mechanical movements, so that the cassette is rolling. Uh, second thing, we can check the electronics so that there is not any damaged components, for example, leaking electrolytic capacitors. So these are the things I will show next. Usually there is just few screws on the sides, both sides, and sometimes at the back panel. Now we can see inside, and first thing to do is check the belt. So it's located here because we can identify the motor here. And I uh, spot that the belt is broken, it's just laying around here. So we need to replace that. So at first, it seems quite difficult replace the belt because the belt is going through this hole around the flywheel and comes back from this hole to the motor. In this view we can see that there is one screw which is not going through this uh, sheet metal frame but this part, which is kind of creating these two holes, is most likely uh, connected with this screw, because this goes under this. So even though you don't know how the belt is going to be replaced, you can figure out the structure by just looking at it. And this part, which is mounted most likely with this one screw only, is same part, which is kind of holding the flywheel in place. So there is small bearing inside here. And this seat plate is uh, basically holding that bearing and this flywheel. And other end is just some metal pin and there's a screw so I'm pretty sure that if I remove this screw I can uh, well not remove this sheet metal but uh, kind of turn the plate like this and then there is enough room here that we can slide the new belt in now I have removed the screw here, so now we can see if we can move the plate. Oh, it's, well, it's totally free now. Uh, well, I don't want to take it all the way out, because I don't know what else is behind here. But now it's 
uh, moved him up so that I can slide the new build around this and to the flywheel and then to the motor. Now the belt is in place. The sheet metal is about on the right position. It is a little bit lower than it should be, so I can see the threaded hole just yet, but I'm going to lift that sheet metal with that screwdriver and then on the same time use another hand to put the screw back on. Now that small screw is uh, installed and that sheet metal plate is in place and now we can see how that belt should go. So it goes in and back out and we can test if it's working by rotating the flywheel and we can see that the belt is spinning and the motor is spinning so we are good to go so we can move on one simple thing to check even if you don't understand that much of electronics is to check these cylindrical shape parts these are electrolytic capacitors there are quite many of them and uh, easy check is that these uh, top ends should be totally flat so if one of these are dome shaped it's a clear sign that uh, this component is leaking or worn out or there's some other issue with that In this case, all these capacitors are looking nice. So next I'm going to put the cover back on and test if this cassette deck is working. Okay, so now it's the moment of truth. Lights are on, that's a good sign. And there's a cassette in. Okay. It plays nicely and then you can of course test the forward and reverse okay that's it I hope you now have a working cassette deck